Hello and welcome to the daily Soul Crusher Six News. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Glory of Wolf Crony. Did you know it's now been three years since we started doing the Soul Crusher Six podcast news thing? Is blah blah blah. It's been three years already. Yes, so six, not six, three years ago, <laughs> at, the, years at the Game Awards, <laughs> Sword Wars 6 got announced, and then we started doing these uh, podcasts. Oh my god, Sam. And also, oh do you god. remember that roughly two and a half years ago, we quickly ranted in one of these podcasts that, hey, maybe uh, maybe they should like start teasing characters, so they have like getting, like, they're getting the fan community to have more stuff to talk about, rather than being completely silent for a couple of months as people wait for news. I faintly remember that. I do. We do do a lot of rain. Oh, hello there. So they actually did it. Like I mean, they did it kind of two years late, but still, for the first time, I think this first time they actually started like teasing a character ever. Wow, 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 wow. It's better, it's better late than never. Yeah, that's what I always say. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, they did this some weeks ago where they teased uh, Huang with this artwork. And one thing I like about this is that, is that so Huang was. Uh, leak like he um, uh, he was data mined like over a half year ago but this artwork still confused people enough to think that hey maybe it's not going after all maybe it's Algol a lot of people thought this would be Algol you and I included actually uh, I remember uh, when we first saw it we were like talking maybe they caught wind of that data mining and they like somehow managed to scrabble together like Algol instead so it is a surprise after all I felt fairly yeah. confident it was still Huang. I mean, but that's solely because of the data mining. Like, I had no idea how to make sense out of this silhouette whatsoever. I I was admittedly fooled because, like, I was just thinking, oh, that's like a bunch of scarves going on here. He's yeah. probably shirtless in his underwear, like in five long hair. Like the hair, what you see here, looks like Elgol's hair. I I, I just had a lot of. I just had difficulty making sense of, of, of this whatsoever. Like, where's the head? Where are the arms? Like, it's just, I don't know, it's just, I had I had no idea how to make sense out of this. But other people, like other people in, in the community did a very, very, very good job. One guy made this. Yeah, that one's scary accurate. Like, that is, the, that is actually insanely on point with the pose and whatnot. Yeah, that is super accurate. And, it's uh, yeah. It's kind of crazy. I, I wish I knew who made this. If anyone knows, feel free to yell in the chat. I mean, in the in the comment section. <laughs> but yeah, this is just super accurate. And then people yeah. did um, other guesses, like like this. It's pretty good, pretty good. See, I'm actually upset that's not the character. <laughs> this one's pretty good. This one's pretty good. I, I like the big fish weapon. I like a lot. <laughs> but yeah, uh, based on this, a lot of people were thinking, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe it's actually Algol we're getting. So... Then someone called Ader made this sketch, which is pretty funny. Huangol. Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> kind of wish this is a character we got now. It's pretty good. I mean, I, I would I would main them. <laughs> I, that, that, that is just beautiful. It looks yeah. so majestic. And then, eventually, we actually got a full reveal. And <gasps> I think it's Huang, you guys. It can't be. It's, it's no. a new stage. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Oh. It's Zongmina! They're adding Zongmina again! Wow. Oh, she lost her weapon. <gasps> Bloodborne. So, yeah, uh, they, they didn't change this to him. They, uh, they didn't change this no, to him. Oh, I remember doing all of this in Soul Calibur 2. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially Soul Calibur 2, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, his moveset was there. Yeah, it technically was. Uh, I feel like a lot of people have bad memories when it comes to Huang in Soccer 2, but yeah. 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 Kind of. <gasps> it's unknown solely can't be Huang. So my talisman led me to you. Led me to you. I think that enemy got the point. King Dragon sends his regards. But yeah, it's, uh, they got uh, Pro Set D to do the voice for Huang. Yes. Which uh, is... I hope I don't butcher his real name, uh, Song Won Cho. I think that's his real name. Okay, okay. Really hope I didn't butcher that. You probably got it right. Um, but yeah. He's swing, which is pretty neat. 
The Japanese the voice actor didn't change, right? I actually don't know who the Japanese actor is for Soul Calibur 6. I tried to look it up, but I couldn't find anything. So I actually don't know who voices him in Japanese. But yeah, in Soul, in the original release of Soul Calibur 6, uh, Wang was voiced for someone else, but now it's uh, Pro at the end. He, he also redubbed the old uh, stuff in Soul Mina story, uh, story mode. <gasps> yeah, if I rem... I it's place. Wang! Uh, if I rem... First of all, can we like go back a to that inferno frame where he's like... He's kinda big, isn't he? Pause? Yeah, uh, what's going on with that size difference? I don't remember I want my that inferno looking that big. Like, holy shit, it is enormous, wow. I don't recall crazy. my inferno looking that big in my Soul Calibur 6. Strikes down evil! Um, I th if, but uh, to like go back on the voice uh, stuff, um, I think in the original the original English voice, I think they just had Grant George, who's the voice of Kilek, just quickly fill in the voice for Ooh. him, because then, you know, he wasn't a playable character there, so I imagine they just went, hey, you're here to do Kilek, can you, like, quickly do this character as well? That's uh, kind of silly in a way. I think they do that for a lot of characters. Like, I remember Hilda's story had, like, Siegfried and Cervantes' actors just quickly doing... Uh, doing, uh, I forgot both of the names for those two characters, but two of the prominent NPCs in her story. So, they just seem to do that if they have them in the studio. It's like, hey, can you, like, quickly fill in for this character? Yeah, that's, that's I like this new stage, though. Yeah, the new stage looks uh, pretty cool, and, uh, I mean, they, they, uh, I haven't played that much as Wang, but they did things, too. Like, his moveset is super different. Compared to his old movesets, yeah, he did, he is absurdly different. Uh, I don't know, like I know all the talisman stuff that he has is brand new, and I I'm sure he has some new sword swings as well that are new, but I'm not sure how much because I know Soul Calibur Three Arcade Edition greatly expanded upon. Yeah, it as well. so, so so that's the one thing I haven't tried, and I, I should have set it up, but I've been kind of lazy. Like it, it is possible to mod Soul Calibur Three into into Arcade Edition. On PS2, so, so you can check out those characters. But yeah, well, what it did though is, is, is I did go to Soul Calibur 1, 2, and 3 normal and just compare his movesets there. And it is very different from this, unless they like. I don't know. I mean, like, uh, the. The, the, the developer said this, on, said this on Twitter as well, that they basically see this as a whole new character. Like, yeah. I think he's that different. And I, and I would kind of agree. Like, they did so much work. I, I do recognize some returning moves. But he has a lot of new stuff, a lot of new stuff. So yeah, that, that, that's a new voice. Very, very special new voice. I didn't know it could go deeper. I think... Uh, I feel like one thing they're doing a bit too much is that they're going a little bit too crazy with like very fantastical, magical-based attacks. I, I started to miss when we had more characters who were just completely grounded in like a real yeah, martial yeah. art. I was kind of hoping that Huang would be, be like, would be like that, just like grounded, but and very acrobatic and agile and all that stuff. I, I think the talisman stuff is cool, but it does again go into the whole like wizardry territory. Yeah, I also feel like uh, it gives them an excuse to go a little bit too crazy with particle effects, which it, yeah. it's a bit over the top at times. It can sometimes blind you a little bit, and uh, he does work in uh, like in an interesting way, but mechanically, for instance, with the talismans, where uh, the more you use them, the less healthy of the next round, right? Yeah, if you go uh, in in the negatives with it, you start with four uses, basically four, uh, and depending on what kind of talisman move you use, you might use one of those four or two. And you can go below, you can use them as many times as you want, but you will eventually go to negative one, negative two. And the higher your negative number, the more damage he'll basically receive at the start of the next round. Like, the talisman will hurt him, and he will just have a fair bit of noticeably less health, depending on how reckless you were. Um, he will regain two charges per round, 
I don't think he has a way of earning it outside of a new round start. I haven't been able to find a move that gives him any. I, I don't know. I also haven't actually used the character that much so far. But he, he, he does seem pretty interesting overall. So my talisman led me to you. Perfect. Great voice, great voice. <laughs> I actually sound only natural because his voice is so deep. <laughs> I'm so happy that I throw his back. But I, I don't think I have too much to say about this gameplay because I uh, honestly haven't played as him much. But it is it is cool to see him return, even though he does feel like an entirely new character. Yeah, I think it's I think it's cool that he got to return because part of me always thought, oh, if this specific weapon style is coming back it's probably going to be like young Sony. you know they're going to find a way to make it him yeah but no it's actually hawaiian who gets to wield that style again and i think that's just kind of neat and there are fans who've been asking for his return for a very long time i i, I remember back in the days so of soul Calibur 3 there were fans who were really annoyed that he wasn't returning as like a full character so, like people have been asking for it for a very long time But maybe that is why they give him all the wizardry stuff, because they're like, okay, this is how we can make him stand apart from Yung Sung some more. Yeah, I think uh, I think they were pretty uncertain how to handle it, because his moveset has been kind of all over the place in previous games. Like, it was only Silver 3 Arcade Edition where he had, like, a unique full moveset, but I don't think many people actually played that. I, I would have, but uh, we didn't have the arcade machine over here, and they never released it on consoles, Namco. I would have bought it twice. Should we also talk about the other stuff in this uh, DLC? We might as well. We can't really. Uh... <laughs> so they added new costumes from Soul Calibur Lost Swords. Oh, I still find this funny. So I think at this point they basically added all of the costumes from Lost Swords. And Tekken 7. Oh yeah, they added a bunch of Tekken stuff. Is this uh, all Tekken Second Seven stuff or, or uh, uh, King, the... Kings is his classic costume, so that might be so Calibur Five reused. Paul is Tekken Seven, so that's definitely okay. just as it's from Seven. Xiao Yu is from Tekken Seven as well. Yeah, and you have Leroy over there, that's also Seven. But yeah, and you have uh, Leroy's little doggo, <laughs> uh, Sugar, I think it's called. Is that a three D object? Yeah, I think you can have that like hover over your head. And uh, this is Lost Swords, this is Lost Swords, I, this is I Lost Swords. I do like the hat. I will admit I do like the hat. Oh, the hat is pretty cool. I find it silly how Astaroth's head like shrinks when he wears the king mask. <laughs> oh yeah, that does look kind of <laughs> tiny. They actually, um, they actually thought that one of the Lost Swords outfits was so new that to censor it. Like, uh, I, I should have taken a screenshot of it, but like... Uh, and you can kind of see, you can kind of see it here, like the orange here. Yeah, like that is like some shorts kinda. to the outfit. But I'm very happy about the Xiao Yu costume. That was one of my favorite redesigns yeah. from, from 7. And that 7. actually fits Soul Calibur. Yeah, it looks great on, like, some characters. Oh, and we get the Soul Calibur 4 song Mina. Which I find kind of funny because with most of the returning DLC characters, uh, we've had we've been getting one free costume based on one, one of the old costumes. But I mean, it's kind of obvious that they're trying to reuse assets rather than make all new assets, oh, and yeah. they couldn't do that with Wang because Wang wasn't in Silver Four or Five. They didn't have like easy assets to reuse, so they went with Mina instead. Well, should have just stolen Young Sung's costume from Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make him a pirate. Oh, and. Um, this is the generic underwear you could use for characters in Soul 4, and also 5, I think. And I'm happy to report that the men also got their Soul Calibur 4 underwear. Oh, nice. They, they didn't specify that, but uh, hey, if you want the Soul Calibur 4 underwear for the men, you got it. And this stage... That's the weirdest sentence I've had to say all day. <laughs> this stage looks pretty cool. I, I like the thunder effects. Like it's, it's a really cool stage. Like It's so different, which I really like. Very fancy. And new Mitsurugi and Nightmare. Yeah, we'll uh, talk more about the story stuff a bit later on the podcast. I have words to say about it. I have words. Many words. Words. Uh, is there more stuff in this trailer? I think that's it. I shall <gasps> the evils of the ages. I think the audio's out of sync. No, Maybe not. That's, okay. he, he just, oh, okay. just randomly shouted there. Uh, okay, so... Okay, okay, so... 
Comparisons? Look Comparison time? Comparisons? Look at him. He's so he's so he's so young. <laughs> so yeah, this is Huang in Soul Edge. I think in this game he was maybe entirely a Mitsurugi clone. I don't know. Maybe he had like a few unique moves, but he was basically he, a Mitsurugi clone in this. I think throw wise he was different and he had some different different animations for some moves and obviously, you know, like that difference is like he's a bit faster or he hit harder. I don't remember which okay. one it is. But yeah, otherwise he's Mitsurugi. So Calibre 1? And this is where he was very much shang -Hua. Yeah, he went from being a Mitsurugi clone to a shang -Hua clone. I think he, really had, do... uh, he so... had at least more unique moves in this game compared to Soul Edge. Yes. I really but... do like that design though. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a cool design. And then... Um, he, uh, after this, he went through a phase. He went through a phase. It's all clever too. Um, so yeah. I don't know who this man is and what he's doing here. Uh, so yeah, the full story of this is that he... There's basically no Huang and no Rock and kind of no Lizard Man in Soul Calibur 2. So... But, There's a lizard man. Well, it's 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 kind of weird. So so you know weapon master mode, right? Uh huh. So there's there's characters there called uh, assassin based on uh, Huang's moveset, mm -hmm. berserker based on Rock's moveset, and lizard man well based on lizard man's moveset. The thing is, in the Japanese version, you never unlock them. They're only ever AI opponents. And. <sighs> Oh. And, and then for the US and European versions, they decided, okay, let's be nice and make them unlockable and let people actually play as them. But it's yeah, it's kind of it's, it's kind of weird thing how they were treated in that game. So wait, the West actually got the better versions of Soul Calibur Two. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they they even did more huh. even more changes. Like for instance, I think I think this was specifically for the European release where they actually redid a lot of the music. Like a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the instruments in the music sound sound different than the than the Japanese release. I was not aware of this. Yeah, they're actually pretty, pretty big, uh, big, big changes. I, I'm shook. Also, I'm also shocked how good this render looks for a 2002 game. <laughs> yeah, this is actually this actually exists in a pretty darn high resolution. Everything, which is funky. But yeah, uh, so yeah, Huang is assassin. Ray tracing in this blade. Assassin in this game, and he uses the same moveset as Soul Calibur One. I can still hear him go, see ya, ha ha, in my head. And then, Soul Calibur 3, he returned as a bonus character. The sad thing is, this is the Huang I'm the most familiar with. <laughs> I think maybe me as well. Like, I, I, I never actually played Soul Edge or Soul Calibur growing up. I started with Soul Calibur yeah. 2 myself. Yeah, 2 was my first one as well. Then I got 3, and so... You know, when I saw him in bonus characters, I was like, oh, it's just a bonus character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never heard of this man before. Who's Huang? You know, and then I go onto the internet and I'm like, oh, he's a character from the old games. Oh. But uh, this is the first time they actually tried to make him more unique. In, um, as a bonus character, he didn't have that many moves, but at least they were just completely unique compared to other characters. And then there was Arcade Edition. Which made him even more unique and gave him a much bigger move set. Though I never really played that as a version. But he's still just made of, of customization parts. And then he wasn't in four or five, but he's now returning in six. That's but I think you got a picture of Bloodborne by accident. <laughs> and also Namco didn't release press assets, so I just had to rip this from the game, which is kind of low resolution, but oh well. Ah, Namco, please. Yeah, it, when you go to the press side, the the last update is still Amy DLC from one and a half years ago. Like, come on, Namco, come on. <laughs> it's silly. Namco, please. So the press can talk about it, please. Yeah. And another version without uh, the mask, the hat. And pixels. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, I get I I, uh, I took a version from the game itself and it, it oh. is in very high resolution. <laughs> They, <sighs> but it is uh, with basically every other returning character they've tried to base their look on usually their sort of one version or another version. But Wang is just they fully redesigned initially. Like the, I mean, I know it's just me 
shouting this in the dark, but like there is a part of me that feels like they almost wanted to do a Bloodborne character <laughs> at a point, and then they were like, "Well, that's a PlayStation exclusive. We can't do that for Xbox and PC. So let's take the idea and slap that on Huang somehow." And then we ended up with this because, like, that hat, that that hat alone is just that's a Bloodborne hat. That's a Bloodborne hat. On the hats like that, maybe based on something in history. I don't know. It probably is, but shush. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I'm kind of struggling to see a lot of similarities with his old designs. So it's kind of interesting that they went with something so new. Yeah. Uh, the, the closest we have is like that the third color he had was based on Soul Calibur 3, Hoang. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it still has this costume here, but the colors are based yeah. on Soul Calibur 3. That was and, the closest I could find. And as a as comparison, this is like the Tease artwork. So you can see it is, it is like, it is this artwork just as a sketch with some distortion. Still really clever. Yeah, I, I'm still surprised that there was that one guy who managed to just completely correctly guess the he, pose. Like, it's just the talisman that's missing. Otherwise, yeah. absolutely nailed it. Yeah. It is insane. And then screenshots? Uh, Hoang, can you turn to face the camera a little bit better? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, he's he's kind of shy. He's, he, he's too um, worried about winning. So, like, that's what he cares about. I like that the head, headband texture is like 10 times sharper than everything else on his body. <laughs> oh, PlayStation 1 graphics. So I, I love PlayStation 1 graphics so much, you have no idea. Soul Calibur 1 on Dreamcast. This game still looks way better than it has any right to after all these years. It's kind of a drastic upgrade from uh, Soul Edge, Soul, Soul Calibur 1. And how many years? Was it like three years? Two? Oh, I think... Two, I think Soul Edge was 97 and Soul Calibur was 99, I think. It's insane what they did in that time span. Yeah, it that, helps a lot that is. Dreamcast was pretty was pretty powerful at the time for 499. Oh, yeah. But, like, this is a game that still holds up, in my opinion, graphically. Like, yeah, it's not a super fancy high-tech, but it's not bad. That's not bad. Soul Calibur 2? <laughs> Why did you put Necrot and Spawn on your team? That's actually bothering me more than what I'm looking at in the character here. I'm kind of glad you noticed I did go out of a way to like make the worst team I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do this? And this is with the HD re-release of the game where they made everything like overly shiny. Like the graphics in the original game, they're on this overly shiny on the characters. It's kind of distracting on the hood considering it's meant to be like this cotton material on the render. Yeah. Like that doesn't look right seeing it all shiny. Makes it look wet. And then Soul Calibur 3? He just looks like a customized character, which I know he is, but no. Oh. He he looks mad about being a bonus character. He's not happy. I can't get my leg down. Help. <laughs> <laughs> I can so I can still six. hear like I can still hear that custom character voice. I promise you will not be forgotten. Oh, he didn't have a unique voice? You no, know, he just used one of the preset customization characters. Like that's what he is in this in the original vanilla release. Amy had a unique voice, even though she only said Amy in three. <laughs> Yeah, for some odd reasons, she was like lucky, but um, I know Huang and Lee Long and Arthur, they were just like, hey, uh, okay, we're just going to give you Young Man 1, Old Man, and Young Man 2. And there you go. Hmm. So we're six. Love born. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty cool design, even though it's so different. I, I like it. I I think it's 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 a good one, and it makes him stand out again. Like it's good to really set him apart. I guess it's also good to actually imply some kind of progression with a character that he doesn't look the same always. Mm -hmm. Which uh, oh boy, it certainly was progression with the character. Oh yeah, I just want to point out that I went out of my way to unlock Assassin because uh, the version of the game I was I was running didn't have him um, have him. Unlocked and it's actually kind of annoying unlocking him because you have to do this battle in Weapon Master mode where the AI 
it's dra- like much, much, much faster than you. That's 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 kind of mean. That's kind of mean. Yeah. Kind of mean. There are some mean gimmicks in that mode. Yeah. Oh, but please notice that these these are the old graphics. <laughs> oh yeah, he doesn't look super shiny. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Still more upset about these two, but hey. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's still a good HD re-release of the game, but I do wish they made the graphics a little bit more faithful, but I will. I wish they released it on Steam as well back in the day. That would have been cool. Uh, this is the I, new... Hmm? I never noticed... Can you go back? Uh, what? Uh, just to the Soul Calibur 2 uh, image. Uh, uh, this one? This one? I this never one? noticed there were two exclamation marks. <laughs> They yeah, really they, they, want to intensify that you won. Yeah, they, they're happy. really excited. Yeah, you win! You win! Are they also that disappointed when I lose? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. So this is a new character's lexicon. You can see Wang is right there, right there, right mm-hmm. there, right there. And, and when then you, you could and then you could spy someone else here. I'll go Darth Vader. <laughs> you... But yes, so... Okay, uh... I, I, I miss Darth Vader's style, okay? He was fun. He was, he was fun, he was. It's it's actually kind of crazy. It's really weird to think that Darth Vader is more grounded than basically all of the new characters in Six. Like he doesn't oh, have. Oh God, no, 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 no. Yeah, right, but no, no. Like, he doesn't have crazy particle effects, and his magical powers aren't that over the top compared to like anything uh, Wang does. I don't know. The most over the top thing he does in Soul Calibur Four is the fact that you hear Darth Vader go. Oh! <laughs> When you attack, and that's endlessly amusing to me. But uh, I just wanted to point out here that when you select Wang, then whoa, the mask <gasps> goes off. The secrets have been revealed. I really like that white alt. Oh yeah, like and this color. is uh, 1P, 2P. It looks really good in white. And then 3P and 4P. And then we have the Soul Calibur 3 colors. Yeah, that, that, that's rather neat. Oh yeah, he has scars and everything. Wow. It's like uh, evil Wang. He looks like evil Ryu from Street Fighter 4. Yeah, 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 he does, yeah. Hmm. That's kind of funky. I doubt that's the intention. I think it's just someone having fun with some customizing, but... Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the yeah. Song Mina outfit you get in the game. Song Mina? This is Mina. available for free. You don't even need to own the DLC to get this one. Song Mina. And oh yeah, I added the uh, balance notes. I can't, I don't think we'll be looking through this in depth. Um. Yeah, because there's a lot to go through. Oh boy. I did skim through this. I think one change they did overall is that they made it easier to uh, sidestep vertical attacks in general. That's right here. Yeah. Oh, and this is my favorite global change. Some characters have commands like BBB that can unleash a reversal edge. This was meant to be an easy command for reversal edges, but based on feedback, this resulted in players often using a reversal edge when not intended. To fix this, Certain moves that come into reversal edges no longer do so. Yep. Thank you. I'm I'm very okay with this. I, it, I mean, literally. Oh my god. I, I kind of don't even like going into reversal edge ever. <laughs> so I, neither I'm, I'm do okay I, which that. is why it bothered me whenever I did it by accident. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. I think uh, I guess the highlights of here. These are the biggest changes. So they say here, like, vertical attacks, like, tracking for those who are too powerful in the past, and now they made... They track less, I think? Yes. Which, uh, yeah, you can definitely feel that. Lowered the damage increase percentage of soul charge, so they made soul charge weaker. Still feels pretty darn powerful. Is that that combo damage scaling to reverse impacts? Yeah, they're, they're doing tweaks, they're doing tweaks. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is one of the bigger patches with just like general global tweaking. Made adjustments to all aspects of animations. Sounds like a big thing, but I haven't really noticed that. Neither have I. Siegfried still goes my hand in the same way. But yeah, we won't go into detail with all of this, but uh, it's a pretty big uh, 
Pretty big update with the balance stuffs. I'll make sure. It's, hmm? I feel it's been one of the better patches, but then again, I'm biased because Hilda finally got some buffs that I really wanted her to get. <laughs> I kinda... Like they finally fixed her down BK, which whiffed when you were up close. It finally doesn't oh, do yeah. that anymore, and it's a life change. <laughs> Stuff like that is nice to change. I'll make sure to link all of uh, the patch note stuffs in the video description. Oh, oh like, stuff. I can. I actually want to use that move now. <laughs> Did you look like more carefully through any of these uh, balance notes? Uh, I I know I looked through Kilek, Siegfried, and Hilda, but aside from that, I was a bit mean and skimmed with the others. I it, Kilek got a new move. Uh, which he hasn't had since Soul Calibur 2, which was interesting. What used to be his uh, forward forward A move is now, uh, which got changed changed heavily in 3 and onward, uh, is now his uh, B A move. Like you have to press B and then A fast afterwards. It's okay. one of those moves. Like, and yeah, he has that move back. It's kind of neat. It looks like uh, Cassano only got minor changes. The thing is, like uh, with the uh, vertical attacks being slightly weaker now, they they kind of buffed some of her vertical attacks slightly, which is fair enough. And uh, Setsuka is a little bit interesting. I remember when Setsuka got released, there was a lot of controversy regarding her difficult moves. They made easy variants of, and here here it looks like when you do the difficult versions of those moves, now you do. Now you gain even more like soul gauge, so there's like a bigger reason to use those more difficult variants. I think that's a really smart way of doing it. it means you're rewarded for learning the timing, but you can still pull them off if you're someone who's like still, you know, playing in a more casual kind of manner. So these are the patch notes that added uh, Huang. Wow, wow, wow. Huang. Just gonna quickly go through this. Oh yeah, they um. They also made a lot of uh, costume pieces unique gender. Oh yeah, which I think is really really nice, and I hope they might do more of those because it's always good just to increase the amount of options. Yeah, options nice, nice. And four new, well, four new stages. <laughs> oh yeah, ah uh, yeah, I have. Uh... Which is just variants of stages we already have, but they're free, so. Yeah, I can't complain. It's it's kind of weird because you we always had these variants. They were just variants you got in later rounds of those stages, but now you can select those variants on the stage select. I haven't checked if you, for instance, if you do normal Shrine of Eurydice, if it'll still go into evening variant when going to later rounds. I haven't tested that. Uh, I did. Some, I played on it quite a bit, and it just seemed to stay this. Uh... It's still like the original stage is still transition into that other time. Okay. But if you play on that stage, it just stays the same time throughout the whole match. I kind of feel like they did this primarily just to make the stage select screen look big because now it looks like, whoa, whoa, there's a ton of stages, but it does seem a little bit less impressive once you realize, oh, yeah, many of these are just variants. Yeah. Should have given Hill their stage, but no. Oh. Added new stuff to training mode. Well, I guess Hilda stage is the wolf forest. I guess that does count. Stability has been improved for certain actions. <gasps> I think the rest of the stuff is kind of minor. So can we talk about the initial post when they had the article about Huang's <laughs> release when they were all like, Huang will be the last character for Soul Calibur VI. Uh, yeah, they uh, they scared people by having a news post yeah, where they uh, said that that Super Six uh, that Huang was the last DLC character ever for Super Six, and then like mere hours later, they updated the article and changed that line to say Huang is the last character of Super Six Season Two. <laughs> Not that it confirms anything, but I do find it oddly interesting. So these are the outfit pieces you get in. The DLC. It's a little kitty yet. It's a little kitty yet. It's so cute. So adorable. Oh my god. I'll just very quickly go through this. I think that returns for like Super 4 or something. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> oh yeah, that's another returning Peach Mall games. 
kind of feel feel like overall this is actually pretty good Creator Soul stuff with if you add in all all of the free additions too. Yeah, like th- this is one of the more substantial offerings on that front. You yeah. get a doggo. You can get a little doggo. Little Look doggo. Him. Look at him. Oh my God, Lucky Chloe. <laughs> oh yeah, huh? That's pretty good. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. And the best haircut ever. It is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty pretty good hair. Shall we talk about the story mode? We kind of have to. Uh, spoilers in case some people want to experience it for themselves. Oh, they, they, this is going to be a massive spoiler. So I'm, I'm, I, I have no restraint. I'm going to talk about everything, everything. Every single pixel of the story will be discussed. It is. Even, even this pixel that's like all the way over here in the background. Oh, God, I hate yeah. this pixel. I hate Close. this pixel so much. Like, this, uh, yes, this one right here. Like, this one so right here. Mad. Oh, my <sighs> God, it's. <sighs> But yeah, uh, it, it's pretty lengthy, like with all of the DLC uh, story stuffs, and uh, I have some complaints. I don't know. I mean, it's it isn't all terrible. It's just that I, I don't know. I I wasn't the biggest fan. I feel like the pacing. Yeah. Is, for instance, it starts off with this whole um, thing where it's like it's set in the future. Well, I mean, future as in compared to the start of the story where I forget what even happens, but basically like after that, then it goes like a flashback thing and then it like, it, it goes in proper chronolo- chronological order. But like that thing is kind of meaningless because it feels like it only lead, uh, uh, leads to them repeating stuff. I don't know the pacing overall, it's just, it's so slow. There's so much stuff they repeat. I feel like they explain what soul edge is like 1 billion trillion times. And I don't know. Did you know it was the Sword of Salvation? Oh, and... I don't know. It's just... A lot of arbitrary stuff happens which doesn't make any sense. Like this like this lady? She looks kind of old. Yeah, Lady of the Lake, specifically. She just very suddenly becomes young at one point, and they never explain it. It doesn't... It isn't explained unless you start digging through the library, and even then it's not properly explained... It just says that, oh yeah, she fixes this mirror thing and then she becomes young again. Like, that's, okay, well, that's kind of arbitrary. Wait, that's the reason? Sense. Yes, yes. What? Yeah, she just becomes young. Yeah. Oh, okay then. I, I, I kind of feel like... Why didn't she fix it sooner? I kind of feel like the worst thing is that if you look at the starting state of the story and the end state of the story, there isn't actually that much which changed... Yeah, it's very, like, it's very within, like, a very little confined time. Like, space. Yeah, like, he he fights a bunch of people, and I kind of feel like it it is implied that one or two of them dies, but then then you realize at the end, oh, no, they're all just fine. Like, he's actually not that good at killing people, it it turns out. Well, he's good at killing himself. Yeah, that's basically the only, like, uh, I feel like, major thing which happens in the story is that he kind of dies at the start and then he gets revived and then he has to use this talisman. I feel like that's the only substantial part of the storyline. Well, the other thing is also they, they introduce new characters which they might use in later sort of stuff, so I don't know. Yeah. One of them in particular is interesting. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. I just want to also before that just quickly mention that I really like the work Rosetti does with his YouTube videos. I think that's super funny. I feel like his voice doesn't really fit Huang. I kind of wish I played this in Japanese because his voice kind of sounds the same throughout the entire thing. It's kind of monotone and also very out of place compared to other characters. Like it's super, super like dark. I do think it's a bit too deep for Huang, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Deep, that's yeah. where actually I, I feel uh, Grant George. George's take actually kind of fits Huang a little bit better because he's, he's meant to still be pretty young and not, not saying, you know, I know some young people can have very deep voices, but Huang doesn't look like a character that should have like that deep. Yeah. And I, I do I, still think he has like, he says really good during like battle and all that, like his yells yeah. and all that are great. Yeah, that, That's fine. I think, I think the biggest problem is that it's, it's, his delivery of lines is very similar 
throughout the entire thing. I, I wonder if there's maybe maybe there's a mistake with like the voice direction or something, but the way he talks doesn't really ever change ever. I feel like um, that is very uh, yeah, it, it doesn't really fit compared to other characters. I, I I do know that he uh that the director for Huang was not uh the three directors that directed the base roster. Oh really? And yeah, it's uh Oh, what's his name again? Uh, he voiced nines in Near Automata. Kyle. Oh, I have no forgot idea. Forgot the is. last name. Um, but yeah, he basically he directed him, so okay. it wasn't Wendy Lee and Kirk uh, Thornton and stuff like that. Like it wasn't the base roster, and I imagine some of the DLC characters, since Kirk was in Hilda's story, I imagine he might have directed like Hilda's voice actress at least. So. But yeah, he, so, he he sounds so out of place compared to the other characters. Yeah, it is a, it is a bit jarring at times. Yeah, I think I would recommend playing his story in Japanese because I kind of find myself enjoying dialogue scenes more when other characters were involved, which weren't wasn't him. Because I just always thought yeah, he sounds so out of place. Like every time I heard him. Uh, I will also say that I wish the story mode had more combat. Like, it's very, very, okay. very visual novel heavy. Like, there's barely any gameplay. I feel like there's maybe, I don't know, five or six fights throughout the entire thing. And the entire thing is, I don't know, like one and a half hours long or something. Yeah, pl- and that's including, like, the song Mina interludes that we randomly switched to. Yeah. Who who still sounds great? And the the art here is still fantastic. Oh, yeah. This is great artwork. This is by uh, Hiroaki, very good artist. And it's, this, uh, it's a good moment. This um, is 4K, many pixels, many pixels, all the pixels. I do want to say though, even though the story is still like it has some pacing issues and whatnot, I do still think it's ultimately pretty a pretty good story overall for him as a character. Uh, and I still really want to say like Soul Calibur 6 is story mode it makes like almost every other fighting game look so amateurish oh, yeah. with the storytelling like Soul Calibur 6 has no we're near the budget of some other fighters but yeah it feels like they care about every single character they've added like everyone gets time they get a oh, yeah. story mode that isn't like like just there to spite this character they're all getting development they're actually growing they're actually progressing down like through an arc of their own i this think it's really refreshing as long as ever had ever for sure oh yeah and i think that's just so refreshing to see a fighting game that cares about each and every character they've added yeah i feel tekken in that regard has kind of fallen off like some characters are now just there for a quick haha ending when they bother to make an ending for them and i think that's a shame because then you had like tekken 4 where i felt it's like so caliber 6 it was really good at treating each character in a way that felt faithful to that character and their ending felt like a good arc for the character oh yeah that actually tried to try to progress like the overall storyline for those characters they paul paul was serious in four it's yeah, weird to say of, that he actually paul, had a paul pretty good storyline in four, four. And and now he's just like challenging the nearest alien to a fight. <laughs> uh, I guess we should talk about this act. So yeah, so this isn't very well explained unless you go to the library. So they're kind of doing weird things about Soul Edge lore wise. So I tried to understand this as well as I could by reading through the library thing is in the game. So Soul Edge has this mind, which is, I think, composed of all the souls, it's like taken over, and it can basically like split mind into different people, like basically conjure people out of thin air. And Acht is one of them. It should consider a career in magic. <laughs> and these people can apparently just change randomly, and also there are many of them. There. Ein, Swein, Drei, Vier, Fünf, etc. They're all like German word, uh, German numbers for some reason. Kind of weird. Yeah, they go all the way up to ten, I believe. Yeah, so that's kind of uh, funky. So this character is a little bit interesting because um, 
in this game, she's a little girl, and here she talks about being a travel companion uh, with uh, Mit uh, Mit uh, uh, Sigrid in the past. And if you it's not Mitsurugi, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just Mitsurugi Sigrid. They, they look the same, right? Like basically, that they're like holy shit. <laughs> But yeah, uh, but yeah, you can notice uh, her eyes and her hair. Mm -hmm. You can also notice her name, which you can't see here, but her name is Iska something. Mm, yeah. And then um, there's there's this character. Oh boy! So yeah, this is the one of the main characters in Soul Calibur Legends, and yeah, this is this is the same character. As this, just just in a different form. Like here, Iska is a little girl, and here, Iska is a young guy. And uh, yeah, it's I don't know. It doesn't make sense if you actually play Soul Calibur Legends. I feel like this story change that did it makes no sense. It doesn't fit this character whatsoever. Like his motives and everything. It's such a weird thing. It, I, I don't know. I feel like it's a huge retcon. I mean. I guess it doesn't really matter because Soulbound Legends had a terrible story story anyway, but it's just such a weird thing for them to do. Yeah, it certainly wasn't on my oh, they will do this next list. <laughs> uh, it was actually not even near the list. It was at the bottom. And uh, uh, just baffling. The library thing also mentions that this uh, German number of people, they have to like pair with a with a malfested that they work alongside so uh i think in this part of the story she was like trying to find someone to pair with and then she ends up pairing with someone like evil in huang story mode and then they actually talk about other uh german numbers too they talk about Svai, which we know mm -hmm. from soccer five apparently he's one of those people i mean you can also see a small hint here with uh with this tattoo that's the same tattoo Svai has in soccer five only his is a lot more prominent because it's on his chest yeah and he doesn't wear a shirt. I feel like that's another thing which doesn't really make that much sense because I guess that means that Svai is just a part of Soul Edge's mind and he's at least supposed to be evil. Maybe he eventually became, became good somehow, but it just... And then he also, he's with Ayn, which according to the Sorgba 6 storyline, you would think it's also just another part of Soul Edge's mind. It just, I don't know, it, it's, it's, it's all weird. I don't know. It's all weird. It's a weird story. <laughs> My... I, um, my my best guess would be that since he works with Siegfried and Five, maybe Siegfried is like has something that they never explain that could somehow seal the evil of Soul Edge away, like out of your body or something. Now, I guess maybe um, I'm trying to think is is Soul Edge destroyed at the end of Soul Edge Four? Oh God, um, I forget. But I. I... I guess it kind of makes sense that if Soul Edge got destroyed, maybe then these people became completely separated from, from Soul Edge. I don't know. I think it actually is. I remember Soul Calibur 5's intro has like a fight between Soul Calibur 4 and Nightmare and Siegfried, which he wins. Yeah. Siegfried. Uh, so yeah, yeah they, they talk briefly about Savai in this story mode, and, well, at least in the library, I think, where they say that he's paired with... Uh, some guy from a bad guy from Hilda's story mode, Durer, is that his name? Yeah, Johan Durer, Great Blade. So yeah, he he like he's like he's paired with him and he's just a young boy in this game. You don't see him, but but he's but he's talked about. They also quickly mentioned uh Pierre. I uh, forget stuff about him, but didn't seem very very relevant. They also briefly uh refer to Algol in the story mode. I think it's actually during this scene, if I recall. Like, Algol talks no, to it's, Siegfried. It's, I think it's Mitsurugi. Talks oh to. my god, I keep mixing them up again! <laughs> 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 so yeah, Algol talks to Mitsurugi for a little bit. So, so, so they actually refer to quite a lot of characters in the story mode. Like, they refer to this guy, they refer to Algol, they refer to Svai. A lot of references. One of them we could have done without. <laughs> so yeah, I think. Well, I mean, um, hmm? uh, yeah, you first. Oh, I was, gonna, I was just gonna ask if that was an, enough, like story stuff about uh, Huang, to see stuff. Yeah, all, all I can say is like, initially, I'm not too hot on the whole thing of bringing legends in here because I have heard it's just a clumsy 
mess of a story. I, I wish they at least had a connection which made more sense because it, I feel like it makes zero sense that this and this is the same character. I feel like that make, makes no sense. Yeah, it's true. Uh, but at the same time, so Calibre 6 is writing is a lot more competent and has been a lot more solid. Maybe they can pull it off. Uh, Cassandra went into like some So Calibur 5 stuff, I believe, with yeah. the Lestral Fisher, and they pulled that off really well, I feel. Yeah, I think, I think so, that's still my, my favorite uh, like story mode than 6 so far. So I, 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 got, I got some hope that they can actually pull it off if they go further with this. Like, yeah, I'm still... I still wish this, in general, just had more people like praising it, because this is really just some really surprisingly good writing for the most part for a fighting game. Yeah, I'm um, I'm kind of curious what will happen next now because uh, at the end of season one, when they released Cassandra, at the same time they announced season two. Now season two ended, they did not announce season three. Only time will tell. Unfortunately, I wish we knew, but I mean, we can always hope maybe it's because Bandai Namco actually is going to greenlight a Soul Calibur 7 and they just want to take advantage of the PS5. Yeah, I'm, like I'm PS5 very and curious. Xbox series and... what, whatever they do, I really hope they don't disband the team yet again because that's kind of been a tradition at the end of Soul Calibur projects now. <laughs> keep Soul Calibur 6 team, keep the same writers and everything. They've done a fantastic job. This is easily the strongest this series has felt in a long time in my opinion so, so i could see like several things like one of several things happening maybe when i, I kind of feel like it's unlikely for them to be making season three right now to be honest but maybe they're working on a sequel maybe they're working on a port of the game to switch i don't know i would buy that <laughs> whatever's That's happening i just hope they're working on something and not getting disbanded because i want more star caliber i want it same my my wallet is ready. I would be especially okay with a Soul Calibur 7 with a big budget. That would be cool. Just saying, Namco, just saying. Well, I mean, to be fair, not even Tekken can get a big budget. <laughs> but if Season 3 is happening, where would that be announced, do you think? Evil Japan? Oh, wait, will Evil Japan even be a thing? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, if that even is going to be a thing. I don't think that's been announced. And usually I'd imagine that's been announced, because I think that's always like early on in the year that happens. I've heard some people mention there will be a, a Japanese uh, fighting game roundtable in January, but when I try, try to search up info on it, I can't find anything about it, so I don't know. <laughs> um, I think I faintly remember Mark, man tweeted about that but that's a while ago i might have seen that or else it's going to pop up on like twitter and stuff again if that's going to be a thing i hope it is i love that kind of stuff um, um there's the game awards in a few days i i, I kind of doubt there will be any sort of news there i will do what I always do, which is that I go to sleep, wake up, and read all the news. Yeah, it's I... It's a bad time for me. Game Awards is kind of painful to watch. Actually, what time of day is it airing? I haven't actually looked into that. I think it's at like 3 to 4 a.m. my time it all oh. starts, and I'm not awake at that time. <laughs> I'm asleep. Maybe I won't <laughs> watch it live then. That's, I... yeah, that, that's kind of late. I just wake up and I catch what happened. That's yeah, and also game mode isn't. I don't know. I don't find it that fun to watch live because it's. I don't know. It's not that entertaining, and they it's it's called the game awards, but they actually don't really focus on awards. They focus more on musical segments and weird stuff. I don't know. It's weird. I don't. Yeah, it's weird. I just think it's a little bloated. At times, that's my big problem. Like, I do think there are good segments in the show every now and then. I think sometimes you have a presenter that does a really good job and it's really fun to listen to. And then other times you have a segment where it's like, why is this here? What is the point of this? Uh, why are we talking about this 
new brand new shaving cream cream. <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about uh this new deodorant that you can buy? Is that the was that the show where they also keep teasing stuff upcoming in the same show where they'll be like, Oh, watch out, there'll be a cyberpunk trailer later this show and they'll like keep repeating oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah, it'll come later, like just stay tuned, come later, just I don't know. Oh yeah, it that sometimes happens that it's it's like yeah, you don't want to miss what's coming up like Uncharted is coming out soon and it turns out it's just a trailer for the Uncharted live action movie and we all weep. I feel like it it's made for people with attention span of roughly a half second. Hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can remember there was an Xbox show, I forget the name of it. I think they only did it once, which was like one or two years ago, which was also just like super bloated, super bad paced. It kind of reminded me of how Game Awards was set up, and that was also kind of just ugh, painful to watch. Is that the one that had like one of the hosts literally always screaming and yelling? Probably. I, I've mostly blocked it out of my, my mind. It was not good. You're you're waking up some horrible memories in my head now that yeah. you mentioned that show, and I'm pretty sure it's that show, and I don't appreciate that it's coming back. <laughs> well, head. speaking of ranting, can you tell me what's happening in this screenshot? Uh, you whiffed an unblockable. Wow, wow, wow. But yeah, that, that, that is correct, <laughs> that is correct, that is correct. Can you... I guess this is a dolphin. Hmm? Uh, this is dolphin, this is dolphin. Yeah, because it looks real sharp. Oh yeah, it doesn't look like super shiny. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me what's happening here? You whiffed your launcher and Raphael has looked at you in disgust. Yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, now tell me what the hell is happening here. Uh, you... Gerald is slightly more to the C-axis than your sword is, so it naturally whiffed. But but you, but you sounded uncertain, right? You you're uncertain, right? You're uncertain, right? Yeah, I know. This is just hitbox, Jake. <laughs> well, so basically, I mean, the real point I'm trying to talk about here is that I mean, I also talked about this before. Just I I I just like how clean and non messy the early games are. Like this is oh. the most crazy you get with all games when it comes to particle effects. Like this is the most crazy. Oh yeah, particle. Effect. And then this is actually what you kind of commonly see all the time in Super Six. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of silly. It's kind of over the top. I, I kind of miss how readable the early games are. I also feel like the colors kind of like better all. I kind of feel like the characters stand out more compared to the background. I don't know. Yeah, they they, they do have a lo nice little pop. Like so, a nice little pop out. I just randomly felt like taking those screenshots because if, if they make another subscriber game, I wouldn't mind them going back to this kind of visual style. Even though six still looks pretty great overall, with the budget they had, six actually looks pretty darn great. Yeah. Uh, I also included concept arts. Whoa! So this is Setska. So a pretty neat thing uh, the dev team has been doing on Twitter is that they've been uh, uploading concept art for a lot of uh, characters. I like the number three. So yeah, these are concepts they made for Setska for her DLC. I have a bunch of pictures to go through here. More Setska. Those, um, number four? Yeah, I mean, isn't that the underwear she has in sex? <laughs> I don't know. I think it is actually that. I think, I think that's actually accurate. Uh, Fluff, I have to quickly take a phone call, BRB. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I'll just go through this concept art. So yeah, actually, I think this is the final version of the underwear. I guess this was something they were considering, which kind of looks Ivy-like to me. This Astroth uh, concept reminds me a lot of Soulgrave 2 Astroth. I mean, especially this one. I mean, it's not just... I think that basically is just Soulgrave 2 Astroth. Or maybe Soulgrave 1. I think that's this is final design in 6. Or Astroth, actually, that's the same picture, just again, whoops. Uh, Voldo, we, we don't need more Voldo, but yeah, that's various Voldo concepts. I, uh, you know, I, I don't think Iceway went away for a phone call. I think he went away so he doesn't have to watch this, like, come on, please, Voldo, no, 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 Voldo, what, what are you doing? Oh, Amy, Amy, Amy. 
Uh, I think that's her final design in six. These are concepts. This one reminds me a lot of her Soccer Bay 3 outfit. Like they gradually became closer and closer to what her final design is like in 6, which is this one. No, yeah, I can see that. Oh, oh, oh. welcome back. Siegfried. Not material. Oh, yeah. oh. Nightmare Siegfried. Song me now. These are all pretty similar to her final design in 6. But the colors yeah, are just, different. See the colors, like the undergarments, different colored. It's a final design. Raphael, final design. Oh my. Concept. I kind of like this one more than what he got. I think I actually like this one more than what he got. That's actually very so Calibur 3 ish. But also, I don't think his final design is that bad. Maybe a little bit over designed, but it's not bad. Yeah, it's still fine. I think I still think that his Sogber 2 designs are the best ones. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. This is. Uh... Of uh, oh. as well and or uh, grow so apparently according to early concepts when they were making grow he looked a lot like as well and then they eventually made that just two two separate characters something like that they, they <laughs> talked about that on Twitter it's kind of funky that's that's funny when stuff like that happens like yeah. the designs change so drastically that they go hey we can actually just make two characters out of this there's this other concept here which. Uh, illustrates that he better, but yeah, this is more real stuffs. <laughs> this looks BRB. silly. Silly. Final grow. So much scroll stuff, holy bananas. Oh yeah, this is the one I'm talking about where they were making this as grow, but then they eventually just split it into two, two characters, like grow and as well. I think they actually ended up officially reusing this as um, young as well. I think you actually see this briefly in the library now in Solar 6 as young as well. But yeah, this was support like this was originally like really, really early concepts for Grow. And I don't I think this character left might also have been early concept for Grow, maybe they I think they said they were considering to have maybe a female character. Actually. I wish you kept that hat. Oh! I whoa. think this is Huang stuff. Did This is like some Resident Evil mercenary <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was gonna, gonna say, like, is, is this the merchant from Resident Evil? <laughs> what are you buying? But I feel Why? like uh, from the get go, it seemed pretty certain that they knew that, yeah, we wanted him to look super different compared to uh, old Huang designs. I mean, this would have helped him keep keep his identity hidden from Mina. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's his final design. But much, but more concepts. Okay, bias. I I like that hat. I just like that kind of hat. It's funny. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like I would have been okay with with almost any of these designs. <laughs> yeah. I think that uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. this one right here, kind of, yeah, like it's still, but that's I I kind of like how it also turned out. Makes him look kind of evil. I kind of feel like I see this and I think villain. True. So this is originally from Soccer Bay Three, done for that game. Oh wow! Some more Soccer Bay Three concepts. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. He's a superhero, <laughs> apparently, randomly. That's his final design. But oh, yeah, I'm not sure who these are. I think these characters actually have library entries, but I, I didn't, I didn't read uh, read through them. I think they're just they, random members of the it's called Evil organization. They look like characters you would pick in a co-op JRPG title, and they're a different class. <laughs> so what are the three classes here? Uh, tank, 
uh, uh, what do you, what you call them? DPS. Say, yeah, DPS, and I guess this could be like sword and shield support. I don't know. I I don't play a lot of them. I think they're kind of fun. They're kind of fun designs. Oh yeah, I agree. This uh, is uh, young as well. As well. I I kind of love the hair. <laughs> it's very very like funky some, hair. It's like some prince vibes. And uh, that's it for the assets I had prepared for the podcast. Oh, yes, so sad, so sad. <gasps> but overall, I think it's pretty good. Uh, good DLC. He seems like a fun character to play as. I wasn't the biggest fan of the story mode, but I mean, it does I mean. I feel like there are people who who would like it. I just got annoyed by certain elements of it. It was overall still solid, which is good. And now the big question is, what will happen next, and when will it happen? Next week. <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll I'll definitely make a podcast whenever we do get some kind of news. But I kind of feel like at this point, it may take a long while. We have no indication if there even will be a season three. Yeah. And if they're now working on a big port or a sequel, then it may take many, 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 many months before we get any, any, any. I think I think the problem is also just that we know with season two they had to fight to even get that green lid. Yeah. So it's yeah, the possibility of it seems pretty low. I mean, they had to fight a lot just to get Sword Six made at all as well. Which I. <sighs> I don't understand why it has to be a fight to do anything with this series. Like I, I, I read just some stuff on Wikipedia and stuff. Like so, Caliber Five apparently it had to fight to get that green lid and swell, and that's just sad considering how that game was. Yeah, the the team got uh, disbanded after finishing four. So yeah, sort oh, of uh, yeah. I think Namco kind of prefers Tekken. I feel like that's yeah, kind of obvious. And I mean. As someone who does love Tekken, and it is still my favorite fighting game franchise, I want Soul Calibur to coexist alongside it. I don't like that Tekken gets all the attention, because Tekken is is good, but I actually think Soul Calibur at the moment is actually stronger than Tekken. I think Tekken 7 is just not that strong of an entry like Soul Calibur 6 is for its series. And Tekken has like the bigger budget, but I feel like they do so much less with it. Yeah. Like seven Tekken Seven doesn't do any story for any of its DLC characters, and so Calibur has done it for everyone who's not a guest character, and thoroughly even. Yeah, I uh yeah. I I feel yeah. like uh if they're making a season three now they have less interesting returning characters to go for. I mean, they still have some. They have like Rock, Lizard Man, Al Gol, and then the weird characters from Five. Like they have, they have enough characters to go through. But I feel like the selection is going becoming less and less now. Imagine Don Pierre, but his story mode is actually depressing. <laughs> oh, they could do so much fun stuff with his story mode. Like trying to trick the entire roster. Like he meets all the serious characters and he's just trying to pull a trick on them. <laughs> Listen to my to story. That. Listen to Le Bello. <laughs> I just want Troy Baker to reprise that role. I think it's one of his best roles. One thing I would expect Namco to do is to do something with uh, now current gen and the fighting games because I don't think Tekken 7 was even updated for PS4 Pro when that was released, I think. That's correct. Or Xbox X, One X. It wasn't updated for any of them. So now with the game still running on modern platforms, it looks kind of badish. So I kind of feel like it's about time they either patch it to make it work better on those new platforms, or they just release a like like next gen, current gen only version update to graphics, and maybe they could do the same with Silver Six. My God, I love that hat. It is it is a little bit uh, silly, for instance. I have an Xbox Series S, and when I boot up Soccer 5, I mean Soccer 6 on that one, the graphics are 720p. 
Series S can do a lot better than Turbo 720p for that game. So that's Agreed. a little bit silly. And I think Tekken 7 is just 720p on like whatever Xbox you run on. I think it's actually even less on Xbox. I think PS4 boy. is 720p, but I think Xbox is like 576p. Oh boy. I, I, I th That or it's Tekken 6 I'm thinking about. I think it's, but I think it's 7. That's like that super weird resolution. But yeah, I uh, feel like that might be it for this podcast, I think. Yeah, I don't have anything else to add, actually. So there's the Game Awards happening, uh, I think, the 10th of December. So if Correct. there's exciting news out of that, we'll probably do a podcast. But I think when it comes to Soul Calibur stuff, we'll probably have to be waiting quite a while. <sighs> 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 but yeah. <laughs> so I guess until then, boy, boy. Oh, boy. For the glory of Okrone. <laughs>